Business Review, your daily source for the most critical stories in the financial world. Tune in next time for the latest financial news impacting the world economy. Hundreds of Filipino overseas workers headed to bus and airport terminals in Manila on May the 26th after spending weeks under quarantine. President Rodrigo Duterte ordered officials to expedite the processing of some 24,000 repatriated Filipinos who were stuck on board cruise ships, hotels and other isolation facilities despite completing the mandated 14-day quarantine. Ana Maria del Carmen, a teacher in Thailand, has been stuck in Manila since March 26th and was happy when she received word she can return back to her home province with her family in Batangas. Overseas Filipino workers are breadwinners and a key support base for Duterte. Their mostly $30 billion of annual remittances is a key driver of the Philippine economy, sustaining millions of family members. More than 30,000 overseas Filipinos have returned home and 515 of the 27,000 tested for the virus were positive as of May the 20th. The International Labour Organization said that the Americas will bear the brunt of an estimated 305 million jobs losses that the COVID-19 pandemic will cause worldwide between April and June. The Geneva-based body said that the outbreak also risks creating a lockdown generation of young people forced to play catch-up on the labour market for at least 10 years. Its report left its estimate for second quarter job losses calculated in terms of working hours compared to a pre-pandemic baseline, unchanged from a month ago. The Americas, meanwhile, had jumped from being the least affected region in labour market terms in the first quarter to being the most affected, with an expected 13.1% drop in working hours in the second, ILO Director General Guy Radar told the briefing. Radar said he was extremely concerned about young people who are being affected disproportionately by the crisis, saying this might lead to a lockdown generation. The ILO hiked its estimate of first quarter job losses by 7 million to 135 million. The French finance minister said the government measures to prop up the economy through the coronavirus have cost 450 billion euros, the equivalent of 20% of gross domestic product. Since mid-March, the government has implemented a package of measures, including state-subsidized furloughs, state-guaranteed loans, tax deferrals and handouts to small businesses. Finance Minister Bruno Le Marie said if we take everything that has been done with the budget and in support of business cash flows, it's 450 billion euros, 20% of the nation's wealth on the table. He added the state guaranteed loans, for which a total of 300 billion euro limit has been set, only had a direct impact on the budget if the borrower went bankrupt and the guarantee had to be used. So far, the government has budgeted 110 billion euro in direct crisis support for the economy, but it's due to update that figure with a bill revising the 2020 budget on June the 10th. Among the most costly measures are the state-subsidized furloughs, which Le Marie said the government would make less generous for companies starting in June. During the crisis, the state has fully reimbursed firms for 70% of the gross wages paid to furloughed employees, but Le Marie said the amount paid to companies would be gradually reduced. The European Union's executive unveiled a 750 billion euro plan to prop up economies hammered by the coronavirus crisis on May 27, hoping to end months of squabbling over how to fund a recovery that have exposed fault lines across the 27 nation bloc. Under the proposal, which could still be blocked by more frugal northern member states, it would borrow the funds from the market and then disperse two thirds in grants and the rest in loans to caution the unprecedented slump expected this year. In her presentation of the proposal to EU lawmakers, European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen said the money would help restore and rebuild our single market, that great generator of innovation, prosperity and opportunity.
She laid out in the European Parliament details of the Commission's plan titled Europe's Moment, Repair and Prepare for the Next Generation, which gave an immediate boost to the euro. The former German defence minister said the money would be channelled towards investment in key infrastructure, from 5G to housing renovation, while ensuring the transition to climate-neutral economy leaves nobody behind. The more frugal nations would rather see the recovery package comprise only loans and in a bid to reassure them, von der Leyen said, the borrowing will ultimately have to be repaid, meaning higher national contributions to the EU budget in the future or new taxes assigned to the bloc. At a street market in southern Beirut, Lebanese crowd around volunteers handing out free rations of bread and pasta, staples that become a lifeline to family whose living standards have plunged during the financial crisis. Lebanon's economic crisis has brought mounting hardship for its roughly 6 million people. Prices have soared, the result of a dollar crunch that has sunk the local currency since October and eviscerated purchasing power. The worsening conditions have already threatened serious unrest. Last month, protesters defied a virus curfew, rioted, burning banks and leaving a demonstrator dead. Prime Minister Hassan Diab said last week the double blow of the financial meltdown and the pandemic could tip Lebanon to a full-blown food crisis as basics like bread become unaffordable. People are eating less, with butchers complaining of shrinking sales, restaurants empty and families making do with simple carbs even during the holy month of Ramadan. Lebanon defaulted on its sovereign debt in March and has entered talks with the IMF. Beirut hopes an economic reform plan will draw billions of dollars in financing to relaunch its economy, but the near-term austerity is likely to bring further pain. Even before the lockdown, hundreds of businesses were shuttered and workers laid off. As the government has eased restrictions, many businesses have remained shut anyway, the rising dollar making costs too expensive at a time when customers are scant. California Governor Gavin Newsom said that barbershops and their salons may open with modifications in parts of the state where public health officials can show it is safe, as the most populous U.S. state continued to ease its coronavirus-related restrictions. According to new guidelines, salon employees in the 47 of California's 58 counties that have been cleared to reopen them will be required to wear face coverings and encouraged to also don goggles or other eye protection when working with customers. While customers must also wear face coverings, use hand sanitizers and follow social distancing guidelines. Workers and customers must all be screened for fever and other symptoms of COVID-19, the disease caused by the novel coronavirus. The move to allow haircuts by appointment in most of the state's 58 counties comes a day after Newsom allowed churches to hold abbreviated services with no more than 25% of their building's capacity. Nationwide, some health experts warn that reopening too quickly could trigger outbreaks of COVID-19 the disease caused by the virus. 20 U.S. states reported an increase in new cases for the week, ended May 24th, as the death toll nears 100,000, according to a Reuters analysis. Florida reported an early 6% increase, while New York registered a double-digit decline. In New York, Governor Andrew Cuomo called on President Donald Trump to support infrastructure spending to jumpstart the U.S. economy as states further relaxed lockdowns and some people flouted precautions aimed at curtailing the novel coronavirus. The French President Emmanuel Macron said he aims to make France the top producer of clean vehicles in Europe by getting car makers to repatriate production from abroad and develop new models on French soil. To reach that aim, Macron said during a visit to a car factory in Etapel that France would increase the state bonus for consumer buying electric cars to 7,000 euros from the current 6,000. No car model currently produced in France should be manufactured in other countries, he added. Macron said the government would not sign off on a planned 5 billion euro state loan for Renault until management and unions have concluded talks over the future of the French workforce in the plant in France. 
Overall government measures to support the car industry would amount to some 8 billion euros. He said this following a visit to Valeo car parts factory in northern France.